all of them share which is called a lingua franca or they can mix their languages for communication which is called a pidgin or a creole say two persons have two different languages language x and language y so what they can do for communication they can use the language z which is a common language to both of them or they can mix up elements from both the languages and they can use that language for communication if they use a third language or a common language which they share is called lingua franca and the mixed up language is called a pidgin or a creole pidgin pidgin is a contact language so language used only for contact or communication it does not have any other functions a pidgin does not have a native speaker or no native speakers are there for pidgin pidgin is used by those persons who already have a mother tongue or native speaking language but they use pidgin additionally to contact with somebody who does not share his or her mother tongue pidgin has been developed for some practical purposes like contact like communication and a specific communication not all the communications or all types of communication that we men we human beings have the users of pidgin share no other common language that is why they have to depend on mixing up the languages or elements from different languages and to use that for communication macmahon states that pidgins develop in a situation where different groups of people require some means of communication but lack any common language crucially a pidgin is nobody's first language mother tongue all its speakers learn it as adults as a second or further language and all have native speakers of their own so as they learn pidgin as adult so they already have had a first language a mother tongue fernandes states that a pidgin is a language made up of elements of several other languages at least more than two and used mainly for trading contacts maybe business in other words it is an auxiliary language additional language that has no native speakers de camp quoted in romain defines a pidgin as a contact vernacular normally not the native language of any of its speakers it is characterized by a limited vocabulary and elimination of many grammatical devices such as number and gender and a drastic reduction of redundant features hymes quoted in romain states that pidginization is that complex process of socio linguistic change comprising reduction in inner form with convergence in the context of restriction in use pidginization is usually associated with simplification in outer form let us explain this definition so pidginization is a complex process in which socio linguistic change takes place which involves reduction in inner form that is the internal properties of a language are reduced and they are used in a very restricted context of situation 
and in pigeonization the outer form that we hear the surface structure the surface structures are simplified Todd quoted in Romain defines a pigeon as a marginal language not a standard language but a central language a peripheral language which arises to fulfill certain restricted communicative needs among people who have no common language so you have two important qualities characteristics of pigeon here one is it fulfills only certain restricted communicative needs and it is used by those people who have no common language Romani states that a pigeon represents a language which has been stripped of everything but the bare essentials necessary for communication so a pigeon has only important forms or aspects of a language and it is stripped of anything additional which is not important for communication origin pigeon there have been a number of theories about the origin of pigeon two why these spread theories are there one is monogenetic monogenetic theory or approach says that there are structural similarities between most or all european based pigeons or creoles with a common origin that the pigeons have come from a single language genetically and all pigeons have a common origin the proto origin so all pigeons have developed from a particular specific proto pigeon origin common origin and generally these pigeons related and descended from a common ancestor so monogenetic approach thinks that all the pigeons have come from a particular pigeon that is why it is called monogenetic and all the pigeons of a particular area say in european region have common origin on the other hand polygenetic theory theorizes that the pigeons did not evolve from a common ancestor or proto pigeon rather the pigeons have developed separately from one another with different starting points so each pigeon had their own origin own beginning Todd classified the theories into the baby talk theory independent parallel development nautical jargon monogenetic relaxification Muhlosdar also listed six theories the nautical language theory the foreigner talk or baby talk theory relaxification theory universalist theory common core theory and substratum theories so we see that besides monogenetic and polygenetic theories there have been a number of theories proposed by Todd and Muhlosdar there are five widespread theories as listed in McMahon a nautical jargon theory it assumes that pigeons are derived from the lingua franca used by the crews of ships presumably through trading and other contacts nautical means sea when the crews on ships they have to contact with other people or other sailors they developed this pigeon each pigeon might have developed independently so the theory propounds that each of these pigeons have de has developed independently the superstrate or lexifier language contributes the vocabulary to a pigeon while its grammar comes from directly the substrate superstrate means the language which is more powerful or the language of powerful person in contact and substrate is a language of the lower people or the person who has less power for example when the europeans went 
to Africa so the Euro language of the Europeans, English, was super straight. And the language or languages of the African people were sub straight. So in Pisin, the word, the lexifier, language contributes. So the super straight language is called lexifier language, which contributes the vocabulary to the Pisin. That is, the Pisin gets vocabulary, the words from the higher language or powerful people's language. And the grammar comes from the sub substrate, the poor people's language. I'm sure that you have seen a number of times in African countries, many people use negative form using two negatives or double negatives. Because in their language, they have double negatives or they mix the, their own form of negativity with the negative aspect of the European language or English. All current Pisans descended ultimately from Sabir, a 15th century proto pisin with a Portuguese superstrate, which was used in trading and in the first Portuguese colonizing expeditions to India, West Africa and the Far East. We know that Portuguese was one of the first colonizers in India as well as in West Africa and in Eastern countries. So the Pisans developed from Portuguese super straight and this was called Sabir, which was a proto pisin The baby talk and foreigner talk relate Pisin origin to second language acquisition. Either non-European indigenous people learned an imperfect version of the target super straight language or the European colonizers simplified their own language to make it easier for the sub speakers to learn. Let me explain. When a mother talks to its baby, who has not yet started talking or understand speech, what does the mother do? The mother speaks very slowly so that the baby can understand what she is saying. And she is repeating the thing, the word, again and again and it happens when we talk to a foreigner who does not know our language or we don't know their language what we do we try to speak either using facial expression or speaking very slowly and these features come from second language acquisition theories when we learn a second language we do so we do learn very slowly. Our teachers try to make us understand the features of language slowly, repeatedly, just like a mother teaching her baby or a person who is talking to a foreigner and making him or her understand her language, though she does not, the foreigner does not know the language of the person. So two things may happen here. Either the non-European indigenous people say, the Indian people learned an imperfect version of the target superstate language, say English. Or it may be that the European colonizers to make the colonized people understand their language simplified their own language so that it can be easier for them to understand. Because to rule, you need to make your colonized people understand your language. Here are some characteristics of Pidgin. We have already seen that Pidgins have restricted function and it has the absence of complex grammatical structures. It has got only simplified grammatical structures. It has a limited vocabulary which are barely necessary for communication. It simplifies and it restructures the super straight and sub straight language to a new linguistic system. So through Pisin, a new language develops with the simplified and restructured versions of both the super straight, that is the higher language and the lower language. Pisins rarely exhibit inflectional morphology, so that no marking for gender, case, number, tense, and so generally occurs. For example, when we learn English third person singular number verb form, he goes 
it is very common for the beginners not to use he goes, rather he go. That is, the inflectional morphology is absent here or rarely exhibited. Even in case of tense, we do not, many of the students or many of the people who are learning English as a third language or second language cannot use tense correctly. Inflectional suffixes are rare in present. As for example, S plural or S possessive in English. I have already explained this. Many words in peasants can be borrowings used to take on new meanings. So in peasants you can borrow new words from superstructure language, but you cannot use the word with the same meaning as it is in the superstructure language. But you use a word from a superstructure language, but you use a meaning on your own or you relate the meaning to your own language. The syntax may be quite different from the other language of contact. The syntax is also become different from the other languages. It is very usual. Pigeons typically lack a stylistic option, like puns and metaphors. You cannot use puns and metaphors in other literary devices while using pigeon. And you have few social linguistic markers. For example, how to show politeness, or how to show modesty, etc. Pigeons are characterized by minimal pronominal system that you cannot use in pigeons all the pronouns of a particular language. Rather, it is a new version of all the pronominal system. The pronominal systems of pigeon languages generally do not encode distinction of gender or case. For example, many students find it difficult to understand whether I should use he or she. Widespread absence of number distinctions in nouns is typical of pigeons. Words are often multifunctional, acting as nouns, verbs, and adjectives, and there is no compounding, so that the expression of complex ideas requires a good deal of circumlocution and periphrasis. It is very natural. You have the same word noun, but you don't know the verbal form or adjectival form of the noun, so you use the same noun form as verb and adjective, because you lack vocabulary, and you cannot compound the words. And when you want to express some complex idea, you cannot express it directly, because you lack the word, rather you go in a roundabout way. You use a number of words, circumlocution, or in a periphrasis way, to express that complex idea. The grammatical category of tense tends to get lost. I have already told you. Pigeons often lack the copula, whose function is basically to mark tense. Pigeons tend to have a fixed invariable word order, which is characteristically SVO, that is subject, verb, and object. Primarily, it has this syntactic order. And in most cases, the pigeon users use the same structure. In pigeonized varieties, the object follows the verb so that word order becomes SVO. The phonology of pigeons is rather simple with usually five vowels, I, E, A, O, U, or fewer, and consonants, the consonants which are easy to utter or pronounce. We cannot use complex phonemes. The consonant system is fairly small, and pigeons also tend to have rigidly C, B syllable structure. So in a word, you normally have consonant plus vowel structure, or syllable structure. But when the pigeon develops into a creole or into a standard language, of course the system develops. In the world, we see a number of pigeons and it is difficult to establish the number since there is no agreement as to what counts as a pigeon, and they are not always considered a separate language. Hancock lists 127 creoles, and the ethnologue lists 82 creoles and 17 pigeons. Pigeons are spoken all over the world, but particularly in the Caribbean, in tropical regions of West Africa, and in the South Pacific. Creoles. It is just the higher version of a pigeon, a developed version of 
the pizza. Creole, the word comes from Portuguese Criolo. Originally, it was used to talk about people of European origin, born and grown up in a colony. Later, the term was extended to indigenous natives, and finally, the term was applied to certain languages used in colonies. Like pigeons, creoles are also used by the colonized people. Pigeons develop to become creoles, and the process is called creolization. So pigeon comes out of nothing, which is a mixture of some languages in contact, and creoles come from pigeons. And the process is called creolization. It happens when a pidgin becomes the first language of a community. We already know that pidgin does not have a first language user, mother tongue user, native speakers. But when a pidgin becomes the first language of a community, it becomes the creole. It is the language of the children of the pidgin speakers. So the pidgin speakers do not use pidgin as a mother tongue. But when they have their children, the next generation, their children or the next generation uses that pidgin of their parents as a mother tongue. So the pidgin has got native language users. So that is why it becomes a creole. Fernandez states that when a pidgin becomes the language of a community of speakers, as in the plantations of the deep south in USA, it becomes a creole. Romain points out that the development from pidgin into creole involves an expansion of expressive forces in response to communicative means. So pidgin turns into creole because you cannot satisfy the necessity of communication with your pidgin, rather you need to expand the functions and you are forced to express more and more which you cannot be able to use are expressed using pidgin, that is then the pidgin develops and turns into a creole. And the process of creolization involves an expansion of inner form and complexification of outer form. So in creolization, the inner form, the internal forms of language, elements of language become complex and develop. And in outer surface also, we see complexification. However, the concept of creole remains unclear since scholars are not in agreement as to what exactly a creole is. The widespread idea stating that a creole is a pidgin language with native speakers has been argued. So it can be said that creole is nothing but a pidgin language. The difference is that now the pidgin language has got some native speakers. Some scholars claim that a creole may not even need to have a pidgin or have been a pidgin and that pidgins are neither mixtures of language nor the result of only two languages coming into contact. Creoles are also called plantation creole, settlers creole, trade jargon, etc. It involves reduction and restructuring and fulfill more functions than a pigeon. And creoles result from continued social contact. A pigeon can be used only for a limited period of time. But when that time extends for a long time, a long period, we need creole. Dominant speakers purposefully simplify their language for the subjugated community, just like for an ad hoc theory that the powerful speakers or speakers with economically powerful language may simplify their language for the subjugated people or community. Creoles have a non-European substrate. That is, the Creoles have the less powerful language from the non-European communities. Here are some characteristics of Creoles. In phonology, the consonants develop and it uses more and more consonants than that of a pigeon. In vowels, it continues to use most of the vowels of the pigeon. 
Creoles also have no initial or final consonant cluster. They have a simple syllable structure like CV, CV. In Pisin, you have only CV, but now it has expanded to CV, CV, etc. For example, in Chavacano, Io un dalaga, it means I am a young girl. The speed of speech tends to increase, and fewer words in the sentence carry stress. This phonological reduction contributes to the formation of morphology. So in Pisin, of course, the speed of speech is very low, but the speed speeds up with creolization. And now comes a stress pattern to some extent in creole. But phonological reduction is still is there, and it contributes to the formation of morphology, that is the lexification or word. Lexicon. Lexical words increased in the process of creolization. So the number of words or vocabulary, size of vocabulary is greater in creole than that of a pigeon. Reduplication strategy is used to avoid homophony caused by the phonological reduction. So reduplication strategy is used. That is using the same morpheme again and again. For example, in Pisin Creo, was is used as wash or wasp. And in Creole Creo, was is used as wash. And was was is used as wasp. So you see, you have two was was, and you get another word or referring to another word. Words may also undergo semantic extension, adding a new meaning. So the word now gets newer meaning, newer and newer meaning. In grammar, new affixes are the result of grammaticalization. So you do not use only some affixes like prefix or suffix, but new affixes are, that is new suffixes or prefixes are being used more and more. In talk piecing, Nouns lack plural marking, but in creolized talk pigeon, speakers insert OL before the noun as a plural marker. Talk pigeon is a pigeon language where there is no plural marking. But in creolized talk pigeon, the talk pigeon who is developed to a creole, and in this talk pigeon creole, the speakers insert OL as a plural marker. This is different, but at least it is, it is getting some grammatical aspect. In Chabakano, nouns and adjectives have no plural infection. The plural is formed with a preceding marker, maga or mana. For example, maga criminal means criminals. So they cannot still use plural s. Rather, instead of s, they use maga. And this maga means the plural form of the noun. While pigeons lack sentence embedding, and have only main clauses. That is, in Pisin, you cannot have complex and compound sentences. That ca they cannot embed the sentences or clauses. And they have only main clauses. Constructions with subordinate clauses tend to develop in creoles. But in creoles, you can have subordinate clauses. No syntactic difference between statements and questions, although they do have question words optional. In Pisin, you cannot have cannot have difference between a statement and a question, but tone is there, of course. But in creoles, it develops. Rarely use passive constructions. In creole as well, passive constructions are rarely used. And in many cases, you have the double negatives. For example, I don't know nobody. And it is still used by many uh, Aboriginal persons, even in America and in Africa as well. And it tends to have SVO order, that is subject, verb, and object, but it develops relative markers. Nouns are generally pluralized by the addition of the third person plural pronoun. So as it develops, it gradually consumes different rules of pluralization. Creoles lack non-finite verb forms. 
for example, the participle, the gerund, and the infinitive. So in Creoles, you they cannot use non-finite verb form. All the verbs are used in finite form. post creolization we know that creolization is a continuous process and after creolization the language can become a standard language so in post creolization period the creole develops getting more from the superstrate and it leads to several varieties a number of varieties can occur for example basic variety close to its creole basilect basilect refers to the version of the creole in which or which is related to or close to the basic variety from where it comes which is called a basilect that is basic creole which has the characteristics of the basic variety of the creole variety it can have a variety which is closer to the external model that is the superstrate which is called acrolect or there can be an intermediate variety in between varieties between the basic version and the superstrate that is a basilect and acrolect in between basilect and acrolect you can have a number of varieties which are called mesolects so mesolects are the creoles or the varieties of creole who is not conform to either the superstrate or the substrate the basic variety rather it's a new one of course after creolization two processes can take place decreolization that is no creolization might continue or it can go for recreolization that is again it is going through the creolization process and taking new aspects grammatical syntactic semantic and become and can become a new language if you have any question you can write in the comment box or in the in your google classroom comment section i will try to give you answer thank you very much assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh